What's going on guys? I thought I would do a little video today to talk about some really cool biology in Australia, although it's not really, I guess, cool. It's just, it's interesting and there's a sort of downside to it when we get into cats. Anyway, I found this story and I thought it was really cool. Shared it with my dad who is a bit of a birdo. He loves bird photography. So endangered Asian fairy pitta overshoots migration route, hits Australian bar window and is killed by a predator. So this happens quite a bit in Australia where we'll get these birds flying from uh, Asia and they'll come to Australia, these migratory birds. So the second known sighting of an Asian fairy pitta in Australia has ended tragically with the endangered bird overshooting its migration route and hitting a bar window in Broome before being killed by a predator. And many bird lovers are saying that a cat was the likely culprit. So yeah, this happens quite a lot. Interestingly, this bird's only ever appeared in Australia twice and the last time it was photographed uh, 250 kilometres further east by um, a young boy and it was 12 years ago. So pretty cool there. Anyway, the problem is that in Australia we have a massive feral cat problem with cats killing up to 377 million birds per year, every single year. Year. So that's a million a day, more than a million a day. And it doesn't talk about the other animals they're killing, like small rodents, uh, other mammals like antichinus and um, lizards, frogs, everything like that. The, these, these animals are terrible. Before we get onto those, though, I wanted to show you another example of a lost migrant, which I got to see in Werribee. It was this exact bird. So, little lost duck provides a rare treat for bird watchers. It was really funny. My dad um, got me to come with him to the Werribee sewerage plant of all places, right? But it has a bunch of these lakes where all the birds go and they um, live there all year round, they migrate there, whatever, and eat the food that's around. Anyway, we went there and there were heaps of bird photographers. I've never seen that many bird photographers, photographers in my life. And they were all trying to get a picture of this guy, which is a tufted duck. And they migrate usually from Ireland to China. And I assume they spend winter in China and they're going to Ireland for summer. But somehow, instead of going to Ireland during summer, this guy ended up in Australia. Wrong direction, mate. Anyway, it was just absolutely crazy to think that this thing has traveled thousands upon thousands of kilometers south to get to Melbourne in Australia instead of going to Ireland. But it happens. And this is really cool because this is how um, species diverge, right? They, it's one of the ways in which species can become new species. If you have a group of ducks like this that are found in China and they suddenly end up in Australia and they live here, they decide to stay for whatever reason, they can't find their way back, over millions of years or even a shorter period than that, they can turn into a unique species, right? And become a part of the environment. And this has happened a number of times in Australia with things like Australian rats. We only got rats in Australia about 5 million years ago and they came in through Asia. But now we have about 70 different species of really, really adorable native rats. These guys are really, really cute. Anyway, a bit more about them in a sec. So the problem with feral species in Australia, especially predators, the biggest problem is cats. I love cats and I have always grown up with cats in my house, but there are only 2.7, about 2.7 million domestic cats in Australia, whereas feral cats, which you can see here in this diagram, are found everywhere in Australia and there is probably getting close to one per person. There's more than 18 million feral cats, um, according to estimates from scientists. Anyway, you can see here, this is a distribution of where cats are found and you'll see that the lightest colour that you can pop, you can pop your eye on is green here, meaning present. The rest of the place is almost uh, orange or yellow, meaning that they are occasionally widespread or common and widespread. And it's sad to see that a large portion of at least South Australia is abundant and widespread. And they're a massive problem mainly, primarily because they're killing so many native animals. And that, if they're not killing them, they're pushing them out of their environment. So you'll see here is a cat with a small, I don't know if that's a dunnard, it's some kind of marsupial. So they're a big, big, big problem. Interestingly, these guys, cats, are the most widespread of these introduced Australian predators. The other one would be the fox here, which you can see is effectively absent 
completely from the monsoon tropics. I guess because they're just not adapted to uh, really wet and hot environments up here, especially seasonally wet and then seasonally dry environments. The foxes, for whatever reason, can't cope. But they show a similar sort of pattern being abundant around South Australia here, as well as being found in um, New South Wales, Queensland, everywhere else. Anyway, we don't see them in Tasmania except for the odd one or two, and they think that those have been introduced by people intentionally being assholes and letting them in, and they tend to be found when they've been hit by a car or something. But I thought, at least until recently, there were no foxes in Tasmania. The last little map we can compare it to here is dingoes, right? So these are dingoes and wild dogs, and they are found all over Australia, but Compared to foxes, they sort of have an inverse distribution, right, where they're not found in the uh, southern areas here, but they are found in the northern areas. So, yeah, that's just a little bit about these predators. Dingoes are okay. I think they've sort of been here long enough to adapt to the environment, and they tend, when they're in large numbers, to keep foxes and cats under control. So that's why it's actually quite important to have healthy dingo populations. A thing that I wanted to talk about with these guys, this is one of these examples from when I was doing my doctorate on native Australian rats. The lesser stick nest rat, this guy, although I don't think that would be him because we've, he went extinct about 100 years ago, so we wouldn't have a photo like that. Anyway, the lesser stick nest rat, this guy, went extinct, unfortunately, about 100 years ago because of, in large part, cats predating on them. So these guys were found all over Australia here throughout the desert. You can see the cats are found across that entire section. The larger or the greatest stick nest rat was found on Kangaroo Island here, as well as parts of uh, mainland Australia, but in recent times it had only been found on Kangaroo Island and you can see there are cats there too now. Fortunately, it is being put back onto the mainland, but the way in which this rat is successfully um, recolonizing Australia, it has to be incredibly well protected from these predators. So this is just one example of one of these small mammals that is, is really, we're gonna lose it unless we do something about cats in the long term, though pff, who knows what we can actually do to get rid of cats permanently. It'll probably be more about just controlling their numbers. Anyway, I hope that's interesting, guys. I hope that gives you a bit of insight into Australian history, Australian culture, and sort of the problems that we have with uh, biodiversity here in Australia and introduced pest species. I'm Pete from the Aussie English Podcast. Great to have you guys here. Check out the podcast if you haven't already. There'll be a link below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.